Hi guys, Glader here. Today we're going to talk about a custom World of Warcraft client for 1.12.1 servers and also 1.3.5, but more importantly, Vanilla WoW. Because if there's anything that sucks about Vanilla WoW, it is not only class balance, but also the client. The client's terrible. There's a lot of terrible things that happen in the client. Things don't look great. Things don't feel great. It's, it's really not good. But with significant effort, I think that we can deliver, as a community, we can deliver a custom client that fills the holes in what I guess is the vanilla client. And I won't complain specifically about anything, but what we have here is a working proof of concept. There's no smoke and beers in what you're about to see. It works. And I'll go ahead and talk about the technicals. Uh, this isn't the first time someone's tried to create a custom client, and it probably won't be the last time. I think I've done some things interestingly that I'll go over later. It'll be technical stuff, so I'll let you know when that happens so you just close the video. But let's just get into what you probably want to see, and you probably want to see what's up with this. Now, it's not going to be too amazing because all we have implemented is authentication. So let me go ahead and start this up. And first, we're going to be connecting to TrueWow, which is kind of like a vanilla server. Primal WoW. It's kind of like a vanilla server on 3.3.5. They fixed the class balance, but it's of course not really vanilla, so. But it's interesting. I play there sometimes. Right now, I'm temporarily IP banned, so you'll actually see that when we log in. It's going to pop up down here in the console. I don't have the UI implemented for it. And if you're thinking there's some stuff missing here, you're right. It's unfinished. It's work in progress. So let's just go ahead and log in. And when we try to log in, we're going to get a failure. And it's going to tell us we're banned. Oh, man. But that's expected. Because I logged in with the wrong password earlier. But now we're going to close this. And we're going to connect to my local Trinity Core server. And I've got that running right here. And you'll see that this does, in fact, work. So first, let's log in with the wrong password, and we'll see what happens. So if the count's, if the count's known, we'll get to the proof stage, and then... Oh, actually, <laughs> I typed in my correct password. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is what happens when you're successful. You make it all the way to the realm list request, and it, it'll serve as a realm list information about how to connect to whatever world servers are registered and then you can play. I haven't ha implemented that yet, that's the next step. But let me show you what happens if you connect with the wrong password. Just to show you everything works. We'll actually get a console log on Trinity Core. Can't possibly be correct there. So yeah, we get a failed unknown account and Trinity Core will actually tell us that someone tried to log in with the wrong password. So you can see that there's no smoke and mirrors here. This actually works and it looks nice Unity's great. I think it can really... I mean, I made some World of Warcraft stuff a long time ago. It wasn't... It didn't really deal with emulation, so it was just a bunch of nonsense. But it looked really cool. So there's a really... There's some interesting opportunities there. And now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the technical aspects and what I did and how I did it. And why I think some of the things I did were interesting compared to some of the things that other people are doing with custom clients. And I'm, of course, I'm going to, at the very end, I'm going to thank everyone involved in the, who essentially contributed this, whether they know it or not. So, again, if you don't care about technicals, you should probably just leave the video now, because we're going to be diving into what I call FreeCraft Core. I think Core is dumb to append to everything, but that seems to be what everyone does in, <laughs> in the uh, WoW community. So, this is FreeCraft Core, and it really fo it focuses on uh, productivity uh, design more than functionality so far and first and foremost the thing that I focused on first was what I call the free craft, free craft core serializer which is based on Blizzard's Jam if you're interested in Blizzard gave a GDC talk on Jam and I took some inspiration from that and also inspiration from something called protobufnet to build a C sharp metadata based serializer now, this is the basic structure. You essentially mark 
classes or objects with metadata in the serializer will know how to communicate those fields to the World of Warcraft. So I guess you could say you, you mark these things with metadata and it tr the serializer translates that into serializers that can interpret it and communicate through the WoW protocol, I guess. I never tried to word it, so yeah. Now what does it look like in action? Well, we can go into the FreeCraft Core packet library, which is a .NET Core library. This can run on, this This has been designed to run on Mac, Linux, and Windows with new .NET Core, and it's been designed to run in Unity. Didn't at first, but I had to port it back to .NET 3.5 with .NET Core, because you can target multiple frameworks that way. So let's get into what these packets look like and why I think this, this is probably the superior way to deal with packet serialization or payload serialization, whatever you want to call it. So first, let's just take a look at the auth log, auth log on challenge request, which is basically the first message you communicate to the World of Warcraft server to start the SRP6 authentication process. It's not involved in that. You basically start it off. Uh, well, actually, you send your identity, so it is. So as you can see right here, this metadata right here is not used yet. I have plans for it, but it's not. We've got a we've got some metadata that says, "Hey, this is a wire data contract. This is a message that can be sent or serialized." And then we have uh, some documentation on what the protocol version is. Someone in Trinity Core IRC mentioned that. And I went and took a look at Ember EMU. Got a link there if you're interested in it. I guess. Got some size that we just compute internally in the packet, and now we get some, something interesting where. We don't actually send a string. If you take a look at Trinity Core, well, I don't actually have it open at that spot, but if you take a look at Trinity Core's struct for this, you'll see that there's a four, a length, a string of length four, or char array, or whatever you want to call it. What we do is we mark this, we, we created an enum, and we mark it with uh, metadata that says uh, convert this enum to a string, and that we know the size of it, and that it should be three characters long. And so we communicate to the serializer through metadata. We don't manually write in the stream. We don't manually write bits to the stream. We don't touch the stream at all. We just read the chunks of bytes directly and, and it's mapped directly through the serializer to instances of something like auth log on challenge request. And so if you come down here, you see more interesting things. Uh, you see reverse data, another metadata attribute because you'll, you'll notice in some of the packets, strings are reversed, or at least in authentication. I've not looked at all of them. I only looked at uh, authentication. And so yeah, you've got, you've got a lot of stuff here. And uh, you've got a lot of different types of metadata that you can mark this with. And so y as you scroll down, you'll see, oh, here's the packet. Yeah, you can go ahead and look, that, look at that there. You can see that there's no stream. We don't push bits or bytes into a stream. Uh, we're using strongly typed enums. We're using strongly typed uh, complex types which you can see an example of. And uh, this is a work in progress. I'm about to go rename some of this stuff. So I call it the SRP token, but it's really, I guess, the challenge. But it's like a token that contains the challenge. I'm not sure of the naming that I was going to call it here. But yeah, you can see you can serialize and send complex types. And once again, there's no sending and receiving, or there's no reading and writing from a stream, reading bits, reading bytes. There's none of that. You don't do that at all. You focus. Uh, the entire layout and how it's laid out in, uh, through the network all inside of this class and you serialize and deserialize through a very simple a very simple uh, service where you just pass in an instance of the object you get bytes or you ask for a chunk of bytes to turn into an object in a way it's kind of like the reinterpret cast I guess I'm not a C++ guy but yeah, so it feels like that. It's quick, it's clean, it looks nice, and it's safe, and it's C-sharp, and it is very quick. I have done some profiling. It is fast, it is as fast or faster than protobuf, depending on what you're serializing. And if you include the experimental serializers for arrays that I've, I'm working on, it is much faster than protobuf in that case. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, the crypto API was whipped up really quickly it doesn't look great, but we've got some, we've got the typical .NET style crypto service provider thing, and uh, I tried to document it with what I could understand. I don't understand SRP6 
amazingly, but I tried to look at the specification, and there were some great diagrams. And you'll see those probably mentioned in the source somewhere in here. And you know, so yeah, that works. Uh, and I'm not the first person to implement that by any means. But yeah, so I think this is an interesting project that could really do something that Nostralius has actually been focusing on, and it, it introduces a vector for scaling and load balancing that is kind of possible now, but not in a great way. Uh, if you're a place like Nostralius, you're receiving a million requests a minute, and a lot of those are non-critical, non-real-time, non-actual core gameplay-related messages. And you'll see that if you go back and take a look at some of the dev blogs from Nostralis, you'll see that they've prioritized certain packets or messages, and they've helped alleviate some of that problem. But there's still there's still a problem. It's a problem. You have this Mangos World Server monolith handling all of these requests that it doesn't really need to handle. And a custom client would introduce a vector to uh, point a lot of these requests that don't really require real-time servicing, that don't really require to hit the world server something uh maybe chat uh name query uh you know just uh inspection inspection is a huge one it got hit in wrath of lich king even for blizzard because of uh that add-on that was constantly inspecting people like this is a problem and, and i don't necessarily think that these need to hit this massive glob of a world server and so there's a lot of interesting things that can come of a project like this this is not, by no means the furthest one. There are clients that are further than this. But I think I do have some skills in Unity that could help bring it to life in a, in a way that the end users or you guys, if you're still around listening to the video, will actually want to play in and not just like some, you know, visual form or, you know, uh, some, you know whatever, some console app or something like that. No, nobody really wants to play World of Warcraft that way. They want to play it like this, where it looks nice, where it looks cool, you know? And so I guess I want to go through and thank all the other projects. Without this, wouldn't have been possible. Sorry for that noise, that's from IRC. That wouldn't have been possible. Uh, Mangos, Trinity Core, uh, Jackpot's Packetbot, the Mangos client. I think there's a C++ and a C Sharp port. Let's see who else. The people who maintain the WoW Packet Parser project. I know I'm forgetting some other. Oh, Ember EMU for focusing on reverse engineering the missing links and some of the packets. I know there's other people. Uh, I can't say his name, but he's on Reddit a lot. Rob, Robin SH, SCH. He's helped me a bit. There's other people. Kenneth on YouTube who's directed me to some of the some of the art data that I needed from World of Warcraft. Uh, the people who maintain WoW Model Viewer. Okay, there's a lot of people. Just the whole community. Without the open source community, it's stuff, projects like this wouldn't really be possible. So I have to thank them. Definitely standing on the shoulders of giants. Hope, hopefully this is a meaningful contribution. It's probably not, at least not at this point, but maybe in the future. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll try to get some new material out on this when, when it comes, but expect it to be slow. When you're building a client, there's a, there's a whole lot of things that have to be done. There's art, then there's implementation for the client side, then there's UI, and then there's you got to do the networking, and there's a lot of, there's, it's really, there's a huge scope there, so, yeah, but I'll try to get something out as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys.